I also want to say uh, just a little bit about why you, why now. <clears throat> We're going to be on this journey together to try to imagine together and, and, and bring this input to the foundation that has been a process of all of you all's work, right, that's informed it, right, this idea that instead of going like this organ, and that disease, and that thing over there. What if we tried to weave it all together? This is about the whole of our community. And now we need to have a group of people who come from different walks of life to help us, as part of a, a lot of other listening sessions, inform what does this integrated, holistic approach look like? And so each one of you our folks that we knew had something special to bring to that conversation. And we are so grateful for each and every one of you for being here and for taking the time to be here. put my uh, palm to the earth and I, I came upon the stone. We have one client who kept coming to us with fresh hospital uh, bracelets every time for recent emergency room visits. It turns out her roof was leaking. And every time it leaked a little more, she was getting more and more anxious and would end up in the emergency room again or with the doctors again. We finally were able to get some private funds to fix her roof. And it's amazing to see how her attitude, her outlook on life has changed. See, she is such a calmer person. So I guess this represents the small accomplishment of getting one home repaired. So my philosophy is to work with others to help them build their capacity building in the community so that they can have a healthy environment. So instead of like removing parents from the home, sort of bringing in folks who, so instead of like me being a foster parent in some distant home away from the kid and removing the kid from everything that they know and love, right? What happens when somebody goes inside the home, you know? You're, you're sitting in a room full of like-minded people. They start to figure out what those solutions are to their problems because they're all going through it. They realize they're not alone. I'm dealing with the same stuff that Mary's dealing, Margo's dealing, Peter's dealing, everybody's dealing with, right? So we're all in the same space. 
So it helps us work through those problems together. Shit of the front desk issue. To me, I have a culture like, I am, I hate front desks. Like when I go to a place like, this country, like everything you have to ask, can I help you? Mm. Like it, that itself is like completely oppressive. What I did was I called the auntie circles, which was more than my sisters, but it was like the women of the community, because I was like, I ain't going through this by myself, right? And then they got her an advocate, right? So the advocate met her at, at junior high that day and brought her home, and she had to sit before the auntie circle. So maybe that's one of the things that happens, because I think it's so unfair that people have to leave their home. It's like a double punishment for sometimes something that's not your fault. If I were designing a community center, I would have got rid of front desks, I would have created an open space where there's in the middle a huge space with a coffee shop in the middle, and people don't have to have an appointment to come in. They can get together and have a conversation and chat and, and, and get to know one another because Having come to the front desk and immediately there's a desk when you enter and it says, someone says, you can I help you? That means that either you, you have no business to be there. It was uh, exciting to me. I learned a lot about it. So and now come to think about it, any project is just like that. You know, when you don't, one person may not have the, all the answers, but few people can get together and start shooting the breeze and then good idea is coming and be formed. I was very happy, I was with Paul and Robert and Julie was very, very good. I thank them too, thank you. and then nourish it with a more matriarchal healing. There was a common theme in all of the groups, which was around self-determination. That we don't really need somebody from the outside to do anything for us. That we not only have the ability, but that we need to build the capacity to be able to do for ourselves. And to make that happen, we need the resources, we need the infrastructure, but we also need to dismantle the dysfunctional structures that do exist. So our production vision is the hub. Think of it as a community center with a public kitchen. The, the hub addresses the challenge of creating healthy places where we can learn, build, and share community. It advances a culture of health through a distribution of knowledge by ending hunger and creating common space for folks to get together and create community. And it's really about lifting up women within the community and having a centrally focused and collective community um, and doing away with patriarchy and capitalism and having a matriarchal and collective system. Hey, what seems to be the problem? And this guy's always getting in me, man. Nah, man, this guy thinks he owns this place. You know and what? I'm trying to tell him that. You're right and you're right. You're both right. Guess what? In our society, we have ways to deal with both of your righteousness. In fact, let me, let me get some community, uh, community health workers. Is that okay? We'll see. All right, well, I mean, I'm willing to give it a shot. So let me let me introduce you to our, our responders. The first responders are are women, and they've been at the center of our matriarch society. In our in our society, women are at the leadership, at the forefront of our society. Let me introduce you to two people. Yeah. So how do we envision a world where it doesn't rely on this sort of monetary exchange versus like 
a human exchange of people. And I think one of the things that we said is, um, so some communities can be art-based communities. Some communities are like focused on like, um, what was it? Like music and other things, but at the center of all of it, right, is that, um, is that we want an intergenerational council, and so a council that holds each other accountable um, and not necessarily a political system. Um, we wanted everybody to have healing space. We want a community knowledge of health, and so that's one of the things that Jan brought up. I'm not saying it right now. Okay, is that that people having autonomy over their own health care, right? Not depending on what she says is, is white coats, right? So I know, so I don't necessarily need to depend on the health system to come in and check my blood pressure. I know how to do it myself, right? So how does self-reliance play in in this? And, and then also how does community reliance also play in that? Our um, productive fiction is an app which uh, preempts a community craft day. Our app is called Ali App. It's an all access voice activated app where you can come to for any services that you need. It addresses the challenges of resources, linking information for all classes, for the rich and for the poor, every class, every culture. Um, it enhances the culture of health through just access to information and access to resources and just having a collective community. And it's awesome because it's all inclusive. Take a deep breath with me. And think about the world that we're building right now, that future that we want. And think about words that symbolize that vision for you, our vision for a culture of health, a vision for healthier communities in general, our vision for liberation. Beautiful. Friendship. Civility. Joy. Dance. Unity. Justice. Endurance. Freedom. Historical. Gambia. Commitment. Right, let's just. <laughs> Humility. Sacrifice. Broken but whole. Happy. United. Divine. Contentment. Work. Humor. Breathing. Unconditional love. Perseverance. 